Alrighty, what's up guys? Single player Nacho here. Did you know that B-O-W stands for Bio-Organic Winged Beast from Hell? That's right, some of the monsters from the Resident Evil series aren't just failed experiments, forced victims that are made through the calculations of a mad scientist in an underground lab. Some of them think and do evil Resident Evil. <laughs> We're looking at some of the most vile creatures that intentionally cause evil, cause harm to our favorite Resident Evil characters and protagonists. So without further ado, let's get to it. First up we have the Bloodshot, also known as the Tender Bitch. Just take a look at this juicy slab of meat. Looks delicious, but it's also based on the design of the Baphomet. I don't think it can get any more evil than that. And any other Doom creature you've ever seen, ever. The Bloodshots appear in Resident Evil 6, and they can take a full-on shotgun blast to the chest, which has a gross, flappy pouch. They also lunge at you like complete, possessed demons. Outside of their hellish design, I think the cardinal rule that's being broken by the Bloodshot, they were released as predators to hunt down and kill what Umbrella calls unwanted liabilities. That shows intent to kill. They're also in Resident Evil Umbrella Core and the movies, which is evil in its own right. Next up we have Lady Dimitrescu, Mommy Milkers, my big baby girl. Then again, it's pretty easy to fall in love with an evil royal queen that owns a castle and a wine company that's made up of blood. Blech. Anyone that's played through Resident Evil Village knows why Lady Dimitrescu is on this list, why she's one of the most evil of the four houses. She chooses to use her powers given to her by Mother Miranda to inflict the most damage on the villagers, on innocent people, anyone that passes by, becomes wine juice for Lady Dimitrescu. She's also very torturous with what she does. There's a goddamn BDSM chamber underneath the castle. Blood spilled abound, I mean there's just so graphic, so graphically evil. She's also a very evil parent because she has those three Demitresque daughters that are influenced by Alcina's naughty, naughty ways. So bad parent means that she's pretty evil. Next up we have the Chimera, also known as Jesus Christ. I gotta mention Jesus at least once during this video. We're talking about a B.O.W. that is created in a manner so evil, it's biblical. <laughs> to put it short, and with no science behind it, chimeras are made through aborted fetuses mixed up with fly DNA. Now you might be wondering where Umbrella gets these abortions. They kidnapped women and forcibly took out the fetuses to use them for chimera experimentation. And that's just horrendous. I think it's pretty crazy that the Chimera appeared in the original Resident Evil with this lore in mind. Like this is one of the original B.O.W.s with a story so messed up and cruel, it has to be on this list. You think they're cute? I mean I have to inject some positivity here. Next up we have the Iron Head. The Steroid Tyrant. Look I don't have to say it. Pyramid Head from Silent Hill. There's obvious inspirations and comparisons that you can make there, but Silent Hill is a classic made from the devil himself. This thing is paranormal survival horror of the best degree. So the Iron Head does have a pretty good father figure there in the Pyramid Head. And it has a pretty interesting development story. The Iron Heads are normal BOWs and then they're just injected up the butthole with a bunch of steroids. So that's why you're seeing this giant mass of muscles moving around with suntan lotion. Coming across the Iron Head for the first time in Resident Evil Revelations 2, it's a scary sight to say the least. This thing is behind bars in a prison and it's just breathing menacingly. Next up we have Ramon Salazar, Lil Peseta Boy. Mr. Ramon Salazar, the hierarchy of the Salazar family castle, the castellans of Resident Evil 4, is a deranged piece of poop. Something happens to the human brain when it has so much power, and Ramon Salazar is a prime example of paranoid maliciousness. Something made Ramon Salazar dig up old parasites underneath his castle and these spores were released onto the village which destroyed 
the lives of these people. And as we all know now, why there's no children in Resident Evil 4. They all died. They went extinct because of that spore. Their bodies could not handle it. All because of the selfishness insecurity of Ramon Salazar. I don't know how many sins this man committed, but it is a bunch. I think it's all of them, actually. And when this man's back is against the wall, when Leon Hairspray Kennedy has him at the edge of defeat, he goes down with no dignity, grabbing his little George Washington wig, screaming off the top of his now dying lungs. That's what you get. Next up, we have Ivan, Bodyguard Tyrant. Now, if you're looking for an intelligent son of sorts, you look no further than Ivan, who acted as a bodyguard to Sergei Vladimir. Sergei Vladimir is a high-ranking officer within Umbrella, and this man was also present in the Raccoon City incident, a bunch of events before that, and even after the nuke dropped. So who was there guarding him and killing anything that was near Sergei? Ivan. So Ivan did a lot of dirty work. As a tyrant, he has those abilities, natural killing abilities. This thing has killed many people, and monsters, liquors, you name it. Now I know what you're thinking. What about Mr. X? What about the nemesis, other tyrants? Well, those are just one night stands. I'm, I'm sorry. Ivan here, on the other hand, not only survived that initial night, he kept learning, becoming more and more intelligent, but he learned horrible, disgusting things. How to end people's lives. I get this idea that he's some kind of child, a gigantic child that can kill most things. In a way, he's like Satan's spawn. Next, we have Osmond Sadler, white eyes, purple robes, cult of cannibalistic bald people, check. Destruction of multiple properties within one game, check. Wearer of K-Swiss shoes, check. <laughs> Osmond Sadler is guilty of many crimes that would deem him unredeemable, evil to a high standard. Any cult leader is going to be on this list, and Osmond Sadler just seethes evil through every angle of his figure. From his voice, the way he talks, the way he walks, his final boss transformation is legitimately a demon. Got so many eyeballs. But the worst thing Osmond Sadler did was kill Luis Serra. How dare you? And let's take a look at Osmond Sadler's overall world domination plan. He kidnapped the president's daughter. The plan was to infect her and then take her back to the States where she would start infecting everyone with her beautiful, beautiful singing voice. The world domination plan alone is evil to its core. Osmond Sadler, just where did he even come from? You know, which layer of hell is he from? Next up, we have a pretty surprising addition to the list. Not really. It's Chief Irons. Creepy motherfucker. On the front end, Brian Irons, the chief of Raccoon City Police, comes off as just the big hemorrhoid. But what you're actually looking at is one of Raccoon City's secretive serial killers. The chief would use his unique position within law enforcement to sexually assault and murder people. He apparently had a thing for young, blonde, white women in their 20s. You can see this in the Raccoon City newspaper file that states all of the disappearances have something in common, and that common thing is that Brian Irons killed them. He would take the bodies through the sewer. Just take one look at this creep's office and you'll look at so many off-putting things. The bottles of chloroform, the animal cadavers, and of course, the dead chick on the table. And this is hardly the last crime Brian Irons would commit. He was also basically responsible for Umbrella's involvement in the entire Raccoon City incident. You have to remember, this man took bribes from them to keep everything hush-hush. Mountains of allegations of sexual battery, abuse. There's just no limit to how evil Brian Irons is. And I know what you're thinking, he is not a B.O.W. Well, he does kind of transform for like like five seconds and he dies. Yes, I love it. That's right, bitch. You don't get a cool BOW transformation. Next up, we have Exila Gion, Wesker's simp. 
Now let's just get this out of the way. Yes, Exelegion is a very attractive video game character, but that's it. There's nothing good about this person at all. Let's start with the fact that she was not only born into a wealthy family, using that title she gained access to Tricell, a B.O.W. producing company. So she took Tricell to an extremely impoverished region in Africa, and there she would use its inhabitants as test subjects for Tricell, a literal poison injection to this poor place. That's an entire country that has been overthrown essentially only for business dealings. Its people turn into zombies, all because of Exelegion who was also supplying medicine for Albert Wesker and, you know, had some flirtatious moments. You know, Albert Wesker is pretty evil by himself. So to just even be around that individual, definitely one of the worst. Exila's B.O.W. transformation proves that she is definitely a monster on the inside. It's an enormous death plant. The symbolism is very dark here because of how poisonous Exila is. That bitch is toxic. And the very last B.O.W. on the naughty list is Mother Miranda, the Kardashian gargoyle. Say hello to the one that started it all. Put the evil in Resident Evil. Mother Miranda, the inception of B.O.W.'s begins with this woman. And honestly, the small detail within this tragic story begins with the loss of her infant child. It's just insane to me, it's like mind-blowing even. That one tragedy set off a bunch of horrible experiments, monsters, Ramon Salazar, Everything. It all starts in Eastern Europe, where in the early 1900s, Miranda lost her child through the Spanish flu. Now, as a scientist, she began looking at alternate options to have her child reborn. <laughs> this restless, even, you know, psychotic behavior led Miranda to find the Megamycete. Now, the Megamycete is what gives all of these strange and dark powers. Miranda's findings and her research caught the eye of another disgusting figure known as Oswell Spencer, who you can also call the Satan of Resident Evil, the man behind the mansion and the Umbrella Corporation. So Mother Miranda is the inspiration behind everything. All of the evilness that lurks within every tragic story of every B.O.W. I know this is way late in the game. Spoilers ahead. She also took Ethan's heart out. How dare you? <laughs> Miranda took the leaders of the four houses, forcibly gave them Cadu, a little bit of Megamycete powers. And these four leaders, Lady Dimitrescu, Donna Beneviento, Salvatore Maru, and Heisenberg, they all went on to create inexplicable, horrifying experiences for everyone else. And the trail leads back to Miranda, who in my mind is top shelf evil. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Who do you think is the most evil B.O.W.? Who's the most evil looking B.O.W. even? Comment down below your thoughts. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more Resident Evil videos, horror videos, horror lore, mysteries, and lists. All of the support is greatly appreciated. I really hope you enjoy the stuff. Again, guys, thank you so much. Have an awesome rest of your day. And as always, stay single.